welcome to the University of East London. Uh, this is our Docklands campus. We have two other campuses in Stratford, one near the Olympic Park and one um, a little bit further out. So we were the Olympic University. We had the American Olympic team staying on campus um, and they locked us out, basically. Um, <laughs> and we had a missile destroyer in the dock as well. So security was very high on their agenda. Now, I must give my apologies. Um, Andre Mostert, who runs this project, was due to present here today. Unfortunately, he was sent to India to initiate a social entrepreneurship project which we'll talk about within, within this presentation, within the Settle, Settle project, um, in the smog of Delhi, which has set off his asthma. So he's, uh, he's really quite poorly at the moment. So apologies, and I'm presenting from somebody else's slides, which is not an easy thing. So I'm multitasking, I'm rooted to the spot, I'm talking through a radio mic, and I'm using somebody else's presentation. So um, please, <laughs> please forgive me if I, if, I, if I make any mistakes. Okay, let's, let's start then. CIMI, Center for Innovation Management and Enterprise. Our prime raison d'etre is around social entrepreneurship you must appreciate that we are in a regeneration zone in the east of London. Students who come to the university are invariably first generation university. Their parents haven't been to university and as a consequence, they have not got the business networks that other people do, other university students have. Also, English is not always their, second, their first language. It's their second language at home we have 121 different nationalities on campus. Now as such, the university's mission is one of civic engagement, which nicely encompasses social entrepreneurship. It's looking at the, this area, it's looking at the six local boroughs and putting back into the, um, into the community and developing sustainable businesses within that community. Our students do not feel comfortable with Canary Wharf and it's really quite a strange, um, area because literally half an hour, not even that, down the road we have the largest financial center in the UK. Um, you can smell the money if you go to Canary Wharf. And on the other hand, you've got the six poorest boroughs in London, two of which are the poorest in the UK. So it's quite an, an interesting contrast. And what we try and do with our students through social entrepreneurship is to say, well, no, it's not that business is not for me, it's why not? Why can't it be for you? Why can't you develop businesses? Why can't you put back into the community? So let's uh, have a quick look. Um, let me just read you a, a quote. Social entrepreneurship is a use of techniques by startup companies and other entrepreneurs to develop, fund, and implement solutions to social, cultural, or environmental issues. This concept may be applied to a variety of organizations with different sizes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This applies really quite nicely to this area. And similarly with some of the other projects including this across Europe. So the rationale for this particular project um, was such that we all know that we all face uh, challenges in, to, in, the, in the current environment. Financial crisis made that worse. Um, there are environmental issues, there's sustainability issues, we have an aging population, and the issues around social inclusion. Social entrepreneurship is a way that we can address, try and address that. Um, now the slogan of the commission, um, the commission's uh, social business initiative was, there is no economic growth and jobs creation without social entrepreneurship. And I think we all probably agree and buy, buy into that. Um, the initiative that was uh, launched in 2011, um, the aim was to foster an enabling environment for the social economy. Now this is all contextual stuff that gives the background to the Settle project. Um, it was about rationalization of the legal environment and cutting red tape. Okay, I'm, I'm all for that. The European strategy recommended that, and quote, both young and established social entrepreneurs need to build the necessary skills to ensure that their business is well managed and can grow. The commission therefore wishes to promote cross-fertilization with innovative entrepreneurs and academic and research fields. 
This may take place in particular in the context of business incubators for social startups. Um, read Centre for Innovation Management and Enterprise for that. The few existing examples in these fields deserve to be supported and expanded. Social entrepreneurs should also be able to receive advice and support from other business leaders or bankers. Okay, so quite a noble, quite a noble uh, uh, ambition and one that we can really buy into um, with, with this project. So let's move on. So the project itself, we have, is pan-European. We have a number of partners, um, obviously ourselves in the UK, Austria, Germany, Spain, and Lithuania. Now, my colleague Andre loves acronyms. Um, and I was scratching my head thinking, what, what does SETTLE mean? Well, it's actually social entrepreneurship training via ICT learning environments. So let's just talk about a little bit about why and how that, that came about. What do we understand about the European context at the moment? We know the educational system is failing. We know that in Greece there's 50% youth unemployment, high unemployment in Italy. Um, we know there's a sudden jerk to the right, uh, witness um, Brexit, uh, witness Donald Trump, and I promised I wouldn't, wasn't going to mention that, but um, witness Donald Trump in the States, and similarly nationalist organizations in Italy and in France. So we're in a turbulent, a turbulent time. If the education system is failing in Europe, how do we get these disaffected youths back into the labor market. Big business will not do it. Big business can't do it. The only way is through developing business skills and entrepreneurship and capacity building within those youths. And this is the idea of, of this project. Now let's look at how, how, how we learn. When I was at school many years ago, it was all textbooks and writing and, and so on. Um, Playstations <laughs> didn't exist. The youth of today are more or well-versed in the use of technology and the use of PlayStation games, video games, etc., to learn. So gamification um, forms a real basis for how we can develop this particular project. So what we've tried to do here is to take the environment, the current environment, to match that environment to the outcomes that the Commission require and say, well, how do we get the kids to learn? How do we get them to actually develop these entrepreneurial, social entrepreneurial skills? And we can do that through IT, ICT, and gamification. So the... Okay, so what we're trying to do is to promote entrepreneurial and foster entrepreneurial skills using an open and collaborative platform. Um, this is based on what we call lab learning methodology. Now, let me, um, let me just give you some background to this because this is not something we've just arrived at. Um, within CIMI, we've been looking at developing on, um, employability skills via gamification. Um, students won't sit in a lecture 20 minutes is about their attention span, um, if you're lucky. Gamification holds their attention. It teaches them a number of different skills, not just um, employability skills, but things like teamwork, uh, decision making, problem solving, and so on. And we thought, through our student incubation, um, incubators rather, um, we have a number of businesses who are using this to develop new businesses. Um, uh, um, the, we, we do have a project with the NHS as well, which looks at developing this particular. And Rudy, this is what um, I was going to talk to you about uh, a little later on. But, um, so we know that gamification does, does work. Um, and so we're trying to put gamification as the basis of our lab and as a basis of developing and fostering these entrepreneurial skills, social entrepreneurial skills across Europe. And of course, what this is supported by is a pan-European training pathway and um, training the trainers as well. So there are many stakeholders in, in, this particular, in this particular area. 
So the overview of the project. To promote and foster entrepreneurial skills using the open platform, to develop a training pathway, to offer a new skills development framework, to put the learner at the center of the learning process. So it's really much putting the power, empowering the learner. They can learn at their own speed, learn at their own pace, and decide what they want, what they want to learn, and what they need based on their own needs and resources. Um, collaborative uh, work with trainers and other professionals in the process, so that enables us to give a more practical approach to, um, to development of skills and competences, and the promotion of such skills amongst young people. So if we look at the uh, outcomes and how we went about it. The first one really was, um, was all about benchmarking, um, because what we, actually, what we actually need to do is to find out um, basically, where are we now? So in order to do that, we needed a benchmarking framework. Um, we needed to see what was available in, 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 in Europe. And we achieved this through desk research, through case studies, and through unstructured interviews with social entrepreneurs, with trainers, with facilitators, experts, NGOs, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, We've looked at entrepreneurship and what that means, social entrepreneurship across Europe, and on that base, basis, um, have been able to decide, well, how does the lab, how are we going to set this lab up? And these initiatives were involved or built into, through the consortium, into the Settle Lab platform. So, what is the structure? How do we do it? Well. Um, we've developed the methodological framework, and if you want to look at the um, look at the detail, more detail of this, it's settle dash uh, e um, um, project dot eu. So that's 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 the context. Um, we've designed the learning pathway, and we've had the experts' contributions. Um, and we've developed the learning pathway um, this this summer, and we're now looking at more expert contribution and. Um, looking at um, developing far more detailed pathways uh, until the year, the year end. So some of the outputs that we also need to consider, um, and I was, I was um, assessing some students, some MBA students last night, and a lot of them were talking about e-commerce and e-this and e-that. And of course, I had to say to them, look, guys, you've, you've got to realize um, with e-commerce, it's not build it and they will come. You've got to use traditional marketing techniques in order to drive traffic to your website. And we have a similar issue with this. It's all very well us putting together our learning platform, but how do you drive um, potential social entrepreneurs or current social entrepreneurs through that? So we need a dissemination strategy. Um, we need to build a website, and this is built around a Moodle learning environment uh, that was launched in early March. We need to develop social media channels, Facebook page, Twitter channel, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, And from that, we hope there will be some sustainability um, with, our, with, our, with our project and uh, capitalization strategy. And of course, as per most European projects, uh, Erasmus especially, there's got to be a quality aspect. We've got to just make sure that we're doing the right, the right thing. Now I'm just going to skip through the, the quality management because I'm sure everybody is aware of what, uh, of, of what that, that, that entails. Um, but basically, um, it will have a number of objectives. Um, uh, they will develop an interim report and a final report um, in, 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 as output 11. So how do we evaluate, how are we going to evaluate the, uh, the project? Well firstly, did it correctly address the identified stakeholders? This is a broad church, many different stakeholders. That includes the primary group, project partners, individuals, final beneficiaries. The list really is quite endless. Did the project present an appropriate development path that led or can lead to the proposed outcomes? Did it create an effective partnership? Did it clearly define and coordinate that partnership in terms of management, financing, dissemination, and so on? Um, is there a thorough monitoring and evaluation system? And how are we going to disseminate those, um, the results from a European perspective? And is it sustainable? So these are quite key evaluation 
questions that we, we've had to ask or will have to ask for our, for our project. So the key criteria then, how is a project managed? Is there consistency between the work plan and the activities undertaken during the life of the project? How are the uh, resources allocated? How did the partnership function? What are the goals, results, and products dis um, that fall out of that project? And how do we disseminate and exploit um, that project and make it sustainable? Um, they're just the performance indicators. So the roles in the partnership, I won't bother going through these. Um, they're, they're quite self-evident. Um, we are the ma managing the, the project. Um, and the other partners are responsible for various outputs within that, as per normal European project work. Um, there's an internal quality plan, and I'm conscious of the time here. How am I doing for time? Okay. Um, and similarly, an external quality monitoring plan as, as well. So the quality side of things was well, um, well, well established and uh, functioning. Okay, so. What do we want the partners to do? Well, each partner should identify a person in the organization as responsible for those reports, and then that will be communicated um, um, through a, a communication protocol. How do we, what do we use? We use Basecamp, which we found to be very, very effective. Um, Slack channel, um, which is um, an IM tool. Uh, Dropbox, um, um, Gantt charts, partner meetings, and six monthly financial reports. So there's an ongoing quality process to make sure that everything is in line and on, on target. Okay, so let me talk to you a little bit. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that uh, this is the culmination of some of the work that we've already done. So I think I'd like you to see the Settle project within the context of some broader um, uh, work that we've, that we've done in the past. We've got uh, a beta model, um, and Andre has, um, can give you access to that if you, if you re request, a beta Moodle, rather. Um, we've developed level three qualifications accredited by EDUQUAL uh, around social entrepreneurship. And that means that we can get, we can broaden the net of developing um, social or formalizing um, social entrepreneurship projects and qualifications. Um, we're feeding into the inter in Indian government's uh, Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yajani, PMKVY, I prefer to call it, um, project, which is a scheme from the Ministry of Skill and um, Development and, and uh, Entrepreneurship in partnership with EDI. And this is where Andre's been this past week. We're developing um, training programs in India um, in line with... Um, with uh, in line with the PMKVY project. And let me just read you um, um, a quote from, from them. Just shows how important this, this particular project is. Okay, the aim of PMKVY is to benefit 10 million youth across India. Um, it's a flagship scheme of the Ministry of skill development entrepreneurship and the objective of this skills certification scheme is to enable a large number of Indian youth to take up industry relevant skill training that will help them in securing a better livelihood. Individuals with prior learning experience or skills will also be assessed and certified under recognition of prior learning. So I think this project goes beyond Europe. It's, a, it's really quite a, a global um, project uh, in, in, its, um, in its entirety. And we intend to roll this out amongst uh, 3,000 3, universities and colleges across India. And we're looking at China to replicate the model as well. So we're quite a way down, down the line. And this was done prior to us winning Settle. Settle was validation of what we were trying, what we were trying to do. So in the piloting phase, there are a number of learning outcomes. Um, for the project, uh, which you'd expect from standard, um, standard teaching and learning. So we'll look at these in a, a little bit more detail. The level three award is grade 12. It's 10 90 minute sessions across one to two months with the aim of developing a business plan. 
business plan is the key outcome. 70% face-to-face interaction supported with online material, 45 hours of total learning. We're just trying to turn that now with Settle to flip it. So we really like 70% online learning and um, 30% uh, face-to-face if possible with trainers and, um, and organizations and NGOs in the relevant uh, countries. Okay, so the piloting phase, what do we teach them? Well, we give them session one, an introduction to what entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship is. So it's an insight um, from idea launch, idea to launch and developing a pathway and so on. Session two looks at uh, business ideas and development of, of ideas, idea generation, what's a pitch, customer needs, as you'd expect. Phase three is about the legalities and looking at the legal structures within, within the um, private versus social enterprise. Phase four is planning, business planning and management. So business structure, the importance of planning, staffing, resources, and so on. Five is about marketing and communications, brand and identity, um, media channels, digital channels, sponsorship, word of mouth, etc. Six is about funding and finance, and of course, this is where there's always demand. If you speak to any entrepreneur, they'll always, I always ask them, what's your biggest problem? And what comes back is finance. And I think this is uh, what was alluded to earlier on this morning. Huge problem, huge problem. Um, so we try and teach students about um, how to raise um, funds, uh, grants, donations, etc. the definition of cash versus surplus, and so on. We're really taking it back to basics because it's surprising how many entrepreneurs there are who really don't get this. They think it's just starting a business and away you go. So, seven, we're looking at social impact or change. So how do you monitor and report on what's happening? How do you scale your business? How do you make it sustainable and well-being as a measurement tool? Eight is selling and trading effectively. Um, sales strategy, building a sales team, etc. Nine is basic bookkeeping and reporting. 10 is the growth and sustainability. So how do you plan for growth? How do you develop a sustainability uh, trajectory? And in development, so that works very well. In development, we've also got a level five qualification and I've just been told I've got uh, a few minutes. So um, these, these um, level five sessions are in, currently in development and we're looking at a post, uh, postgraduate certificate in enterprise education, all of which will spin out of the Settle project. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting project. Please visit the website.